Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris, and today I'm gonna to be talking Echinacea and Calendula. Why I'm starting them, why I love them, and why I think everybody should have these in their garden. So I'm outside on my back patio today, and being serenaded by some crows, so if you hear them in the background, they just apparently have a lot to say today. I am going to start five plants of Echinacea and quite a few of Calendula because Calendula is actually one of my favorite herbs. It just is so amazing and can do so many different things. Calendula is one of those plants I think everybody should have. I love it. I'm planning to grow quite a bit more of it this year than I have previously. So I have quite a few pots here. And no, this time I didn't rinse them because this was kind of a spur on the moment thing and it's dry for the moment. So I thought, why not get this done real quick? But with these flowers, I'm not so worried about any kind of diseases or anything. I worry about that more with vegetables. I'm still using this miracle Grow organic soil because I still haven't run out of it yet. While I fill these up with soil, let's talk echinacea and why it is as fantastic as it is. So echinacea can be found in just about any store, any pharmacy, any kind of herbal place. It's, it's not hard to find. You can often find the flowers in nurseries or even sometimes in big box stores sell echinacea. And one reason that you can find them just about anywhere as plants is because they're so pretty. They have these beautiful purple flowers. And why wouldn't you want those in your garden, right? I don't have any actual echinacea plants to show you what the flowers look like. But as long as these do well, you'll be able to see them by the end of the summer. So if you hit that subscribe button, you'll be able to follow along and see how all of these plants do. So Echinacea is really an incredible herb for colds or upper respiratory infections. It's very good at stimulating your immune system, kind of like elderberry. That's, that's the big thing elderberry is known for, for stimulating your immune system. And echinacea does that too. Because it's such an immune stimulant, if you have an autoimmune condition where your immune system is like overactive all the time, then echinacea is something to be a little bit more cautious about because it could potentially cause problems revving up an already over revved immune system even more. Echinacea has also got a lot of antibiotic and antimicrobial properties to it. That is also one of the main qualities that makes it so great for upper respiratory infections. It really likes to target that area of your body. It's also really great for like strep throat or mastitis. Actually, both echinacea and calendula can both be used for mastitis and that's because it has antibiotic qualities. So if you suffer from that, you can definitely use some echinacea to help. Pretty much anything you can use an antibiotic for, you could use echinacea for. So one thing to note about echinacea is that it can be a little subtle. So there are some people who say, oh, well, echinacea doesn't work. I've tried it, but sometimes you just have to take a little bit higher dose for it to actually work. And sometimes you have to rev your body up a little bit. And by that, I just mean take something that's kind of 
stimulating for your body like cayenne pepper or ginger or something similar to that that kind of gets the blood flowing in your body and then take some echinacea and sometimes it'll be absorbed a little bit better here we are I didn't count these out at all. And I've realized we have two different types of echinacea we're planting together. One is the echinacea purpurea. That's a pretty common one. The other one is this echinacea polita. Echinacea is a sun loving plant. So you wanna make sure to plant it in full sun I think I'm going to do four of each. That should suffice for now. They grow to about four feet tall, so you want to make sure that you have plenty of space for it. And also be mindful if you're planting it around other flowers, other plants that are kind of low growing, that you don't block the sun with the echinacea for the other plants that need it. One other thing that echinacea is really fantastic for that I even just learned recently is for things like rattlesnake bites or like hobo or recluse spider bites. The venom that they release when they bite you dissolves your tissue. It has an enzyme in it that dissolves your tissue. And echinacea actually has a quality that neutralizes that enzyme to prevent any further tissue destruction. If you do get a bite, it will help halt that venom when you apply the echinacea to it, which is pretty cool. Because those things can be pretty nasty. Now let's go with our calendula. I cannot even tell you how much I love this herb. And I call it an herb even though it's a flower, it just because to me when I think of it, because it has such amazing medicinal qualities, I always think of it as an herb, but it's a really beautiful flower too. So you kind of get a double bang for your buck, just like the echinacea, because it's also beautiful and really medicinal. Calendula is the same way. Calendula, calendula is my go-to for like wound care. It has amazing healing properties. So any kind of cut or a sting or a minor burn, anything like that, like calendula is, calendula is one of the main ingredients in my healing salve that I make because it has such amazing healing qualities. That's kind of my number one thing that I use calendula for, and I wouldn't be without it, honestly. I'm just putting two seeds in each of these, just to make sure they grow. Another thing that calendula is really incredible for is your skin. It has the same antibiotic qualities that I just talked about with the echinacea, as well as it's a really great anti-inflammatory. So, for skin issues, a lot of skin issues tend to be kind of inflammatory issues, and it, it's really amazing for that. It's also really great for scar tissue, surprisingly, like helping to heal that scar tissue and make scars less prominent. When I make soap, I like to put uh, calendula infused oil in my soap, just because it's so incredibly good for your skin. It can also be really good for like oral health. If you have any kind of inflammatory issues in your mouth, like gingivitis or something like that, it can help with that as well. And with calendula, you can use any aerial part of the plant. Leaves, stems, flowers, they all work amazing. You can make calendula into a tea. Um, you can make actually, you can both make both echinacea and calendula into teas. You can make them into tinctures. You can infuse them in oil and create salves or like I use the infused oil for calendula for soap. You can use them in pretty 
much any way, really. They're quite versatile herbs and they're mostly very safe, except with calendula, you don't wanna use it when you're pregnant. That is a big deal. Don't use it when you're pregnant. Echinacea, don't use it if you have an autoimmune disease. Calendula is a really popular ingredient for like natural diaper rash creams and stuff like that. It is generally very safe, very soothing. As I said, it's really good for the skin, not only for us who have had our skin for decades, but also for the young ones whose skin is brand new. If you find any of this information useful, please hit the like button so YouTube will know to share this video with other people. So I'm just planting these. I'm just kind of poking them in a little bit about quarter to a half an inch or so. The general rule is you plant a seed twice as deep as it is wide. Both of these plants readily seed themselves without any help from, from us. So you don't really have to bury it that far and you don't want to bury it too deep. Otherwise the seed will struggle to get to the surface. And there we have it. We have eight pots of Echinacea, four of the Echinacea purpurea and four of Echinacea pallida. And then we have 13 pots of Calendula. I have six pots of the Calendula racina, which is just your basic orange Calendula. And then I ended up with seven pots of the Calendula pink sunrise. So a pink version of Calendula. They'll both work the same medicinally. There isn't any difference between the two of them. So I thank you for joining me today. We're finishing just in time because it is starting to sprinkle here again. I was hoping I could squeeze this in in between the rain this morning and the rain that was coming this afternoon. We just made it. I thank you for joining me today and starting our first herbal seeds of 2023 and I hope to see you next time.